Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new edition of IDTV 2015. We are your hosts, I'm Amy J. And I'm Patrick Vigil. With City College's accreditation modes behind us, we can now truly get on to what matters here at the campus, getting reliable Wi-Fi coverage. I've been trying, okay, to log on to free wireless number four all a few times this morning, and service has been very spotty at best. I'm not sure who's in charge here, but this is absolutely deplorable. In this day and age, my online presence is just as important as my brick and mortar presence, and frankly, I want my Tumblr feed to load just a little bit faster, going on. Dude, stick to the script. Sorry. In this episode of IDTV, we've got a spotlight on the Mission Community Market, and then we're going to learn how to make a simple salad with Michael Ocampo, sous chef at Zero Zero. We've got some tips on how to get started in the world of drone photography. And then we have an IDTV exclusive of the June Flower Chronicles, a sci-fi short produced and directed by City College of San Francisco students. We've also got a live performance of local singer-songwriter Kimber Starmack and more. Come on, one second. Oh my God, I just got retweeted by Rihanna. Do you think I'll be trending by the end of this? No. Second? <laughs> you are such a joy to work with. <laughs> Come on, this is okay. exciting. I'm going to not our experience to grow in popularity over the past couple of years at the Michigan Music Market, which takes place on Thursdays every week. What was that, Patrick? Farmers markets have become a gathering place for the community to enjoy some live music and culture. Do you mind, Patrick? I'm sorry, I'm famished. Wait a bit. It's organic. Get rid of it. Fine. Let's check out the Mission Community Farmers Market. You guys take Apple Pay, right? I don't think I have my wallet on me. A farmer's market in San Francisco's Mission District? But why? Anyone who has ever walked along San Francisco's Mission Street might assume that there are plenty of cheap fruits and vegetables for sale in almost every other corner. And at a time when an estimated 20% of the Mission's traditional Latin population has left due to gentrification, it seemed time to look more deeply into this Mission community market, since the market is located right outside CCSF's Mission Campus back door. Mission Community Market came out of a process that was initiated by the city, the city's planning department. They um, did some community workshops for um, the Mission neighborhood where they asked the community what they wanted. And out of those workshops came out two needs that they identified. One was the need for more public open space and the other one was it would be great to have a farmer's market. And so a group of community members from there decided to take those ideas and say, let's just do these. And they identified this block, the block of Bartlett Street between 21st and 22nd Street. And because of its location and the conditions of the current street, they thought this would be a good place for an open space. We bring fresh local produce that has more of a nutritional quality than um, regular grocery stores. Most of the things that we carry are organic and local and were picked yesterday. And that kind of produce has actually a higher nutritional value. Um, so they are actually better for, the, for health and for the community. Uh, hola, mi nombre es Guadalupe. Trabajo en Lucky Port Mission Market. I work here for 10 years ago. Pues allá venden producto de que de diferentes países: México, Perú, Ecuador, Costa Rica. When the Mission Market is open, this business is slow. Have you ever shopped at the farmers market? Uh, in realidad, no, no he comprado. Solo voy así por palomitas. We have not personally or directly gotten any pushback or complaints or comments from the local grocers. Um, actually, what we provide is, is different produce. Um, we only hear once a week for four hours. For the past couple of years, BioAid has supported the EBT, which is the Electric Benefits Transfer Matching Program. Uh, EBT is also known, formerly known as food stamps, now known as CalFresh. So when folks arrive at the market, they can swipe their EBT card 
and for up to $10, they get an additional $10, so it doubles up their purchasing power, and they can spend that money on specifically fruits and vegetables. So this program is really innovative because it not only allows you know, low-income folks to buy more fresh, healthy food, it also puts more money in the pockets of farmers. And I, I really believe in supporting the actual people who are doing a lot of the growing of their products, a lot of the sourcing of their products, because they know where it's coming from, they know how it's been dealt with. In the case of animals and eggs, it's really important to me because um, they have feelings in, in a lot of the production that we see going into major stores and major chains is a very inhumane uh, way of treating animals. I don't want to support that. About 5% of our revenues originally came from EBT sales and now it's actually 22%. In a few short months, the Mission Community Market will have a permanent new home at the newly created Bartlett Plaza. The groundbreaking for the plaza was actually February 4th. And so now we're going to have more open space for the public and uh, the farmer's market. The best way to describe the plaza is that the surface area from building to building is going to be on level ground. The targeted completion date for the plaza is actually in the fall of 2015. The market has been so well received that it has grown a lot and it may be too small. We usually get around 1,500 shoppers a week. I like to tell people, bring your family, bring your friends, and uh, have a good time. They have good music. I see families come and not buy anything and just hang out. I like coming to the farmer's market so that uh, my daughter Frida can see where food comes from and the people who grow it. And um, also it's a chance to meet other families and friends in the neighborhood. The Mission Community Market is held every Thursday from 4 to 8 p.m. on 22nd Street between Mission and Valencia. Welcome back to IDTV. We have a special treat for those of you at home who wanted a second helping after that piece about the Mission Farmers Market. We're excited to have Michael Ocampo, sous chef at Zero Zero, who will share his springtime recipes that will inspire your next shopping trip to the farmers market. Basically, we're just going to make a, a really simple salad. Um, we're going to use pea shoots. Um, we're going to use. We're going to do a fava bean and pine nut pesto. Um, so I'm going to take about a quarter cup of uh, fava beans. Mm -hmm. Add about a tablespoon, maybe like a tablespoon plus a teaspoon of um, pine nuts. And we also have uh, some kosher salt. And uh, that's going to help kind of grind things up. It's going to season it as well as uh, kind of help us grind. And we're going to add some uh, mint as well, um, just some fresh picked mint. Yeah, so we're just going to start grinding this stuff up. And I'm looking for an oil to come out. Um, it's a natural oil that occurs. Uh, especially in pine nuts, and it's going to be, become fragrant, and it's going to uh, kind of help to add, carry the flavor of everything else in the salad. Uh, so you can see it's spreadable. Um, I added Meyer lemon zest, a little more pepper, and some olive oil to get to that point. A touch more salt. Um, black pepper, always black pepper. Um, uh, just adds a nice, I mean, adds a little spiciness, a little heat, you know? Yeah. Um, and if, you know, vinaigrettes aren't really complete without it. As we uh, get that going, um, I'm going to add the olive oil to it, and I'm just going to stir it up. This is a very simple base. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put this on the bottom of the plate and just kind of spread it around. This is kind of rich. The pine nuts have a lot of great flavor and texture. So Sounds great. Yeah. I wish you guys could smell this. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, but basically as you, know, as you eat it, it's going to become a little more interesting because you'll take a bite of this and get some of this. Uh, we all do want to add some um, basil and mint. Uh, to the actual salad itself. Looks good. And uh, so now that we have it arranged in the in the in the bowl itself, um, very uh, pretty. I got a little nest going on, and I'm just gonna take a just a fat hunk of the uh, of the burrata itself. And put that right in the center. And uh, you always want to season it at, uh, at the end. So I have it. It's plain right now. Just got a little bit little bit of salt, um, a little black pepper, fresh cracked. Right. Um, you never want the pre-ground stuff. It loses all its flavor. Um, and then just a touch of a little touch more olive oil on top, and that Wonderful. is um, that is it. That's a springtime uh, burrata salad with the uh, fava bean and pine nut pesto. Great! It looks so good. Oh, we want to thank you, Michael, for coming in today and stopping by and showing us what we can do with these wonderful fruits and vegetables from the farmers market. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Zang. If you want to check out what's on the menu at Zero Zero, they're located in the Soma at 826 Folsom Street.
I believe it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Folsom Street in San Francisco. They take reservations and they're open for lunch and dinner. Drones are making international headlines in more ways than one. In Paris, there have been two sightings of a mysterious drone capturing footage during the evening, which is illegal in France, even with a license. Officials think the unknown drone user is only perpetuating the creepy drone user stereotype if they choose to remain unknown. It's just very scary. You know, it makes me miss the days when men didn't need to hide behind technology to be creepy. Besides, I think my angles are better from the ground. The Federal Aviation Administration seems to be a little more chill than previously thought. Some of the proposed rules only require that drone users be 17 years old and obtain an FAA UAS certificate to operate a drone under 55 pounds. The new set of rules are up for public comment. Maybe someone will finally get me the phantom on my Amazon wish list. Mm, I wouldn't hold my breath. I'm going to propose a rule that the FAA requires you, Amy, to get me a drone. We've got a drone enthusiast and City College student, Luca Tyre, in the studio today. Thanks for coming. Thank you for inviting me. So, how did drones work? Okay, uh, honestly, a couple months ago, I didn't know anything about drones. And now, because of an assignment that we need to do, and I got to know more than a little, basically you can get really good footage. Uh, Some really many, amazing footage. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a good, a good things to use for different kind of um, shooting. After a while I got to know how to um, control and how to use that kind of um, uh, machine. Yeah. Nice. And it's definitely, it's definitely a good, a good thing to have. Quite expensive, but... <laughs> of course. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Luca. Thank you. And now we're going to cut to film shot on drone. This amazing aerial footage was filmed using a drone. The drone has become wildly popular in the past few years. Its popularity is growing exponentially. There are many who share the enjoyment of flying drones for their work or as a hobby. I love this thing. I am an average and a passionate filmmaker. I love these things. When this thing came I was so excited because this revolutionizes filmmaking as we know it. So, for an avid filmmaker like me, this adds a lot of dynamic cinematography clips that I could have never managed to get. So, for those people who are into films, this is a godsend equipment. And it is affordable. And it's very simple to operate. Well, listen, when you make a shot and it add this in your film production, it adds value. These things make money shots. I attached the Hero 4 on a gimbal. It's a 3D axis gimbal. So this gimbal kind of turns and tilts the camera. And when it's turning, it gives a nice smooth when it's turning. And also, when I'm, when I'm flying and I want to fly down, I can just tilt down the camera from my remote control. There are a few things drone operators should keep in mind before their drones start flying. Here's what you should know. Keep drone flights within your visual line of sight and below 400 feet of altitude. Closely monitor your drone's battery charge and distance from you. When the battery strength drops to 60% of maximum, it's good advice to start the drone's return trip home. Power lines are dangerous obstacles and may disrupt communications with drones. I'm a student at City College of San Francisco. So this is my drone SEMA X5C, came with a built-in camera, which is not the best camera, but um, it takes decent pictures and uh, videos. The drone is extremely easy to fly, uh, and it's actually very easy also to repair in case of damages. So um, let's see how it flies. I'm a beginner drone user, I'm still learning. As of today, I use my drone uh, only as a hobby. I like to fly it around the parks and uh, take some of my material videos and pictures. Uh, but in future, I'm planning to upgrade it and uh, take more serious uh, videos and pictures. The wind can change the flight direction of drones and increase its battery usage. Be aware of local no-fly zones where drones are prohibited from entering during flights. 
My name is Alexandra Pickovit. I'm the spokesperson for Golden Gate National Recreation Area and the National Park Service. In national parks, drones or un unmanned aircraft should not be flown. We've always had two locations where radio flyers, unmanned aircraft, could be flown. One of them is at Fort Funston. It's very near the hang glider platform. And you can fly there when there are no hang gliders in the air. The second location is up in Marin. It's north of the um, Muir Beach Overlook, near the picnic area. So here at Golden Gate National Recreation Area, we're the most visited national park in the country. We have more than 15 million visitors each year. So at Alcatraz, for example, someone was flying an unmanned aircraft from a boat over Alcatraz where there were about 3,000 people uh, assembled on the boat dock. So had that crashed, it could have actually injured people. The other problem is that um, unmanned aircraft, drones, uh, flush wildlife. A lot of times people are trying to video the wildlife, but actually these are nesting birds or uh, wildlife that's protected by federal laws. And so um, what we are trying to do is keep people safe and to keep the wildlife safe uh, while the FAA determines the best way to include this type of use on federal lands, including national parks. Try to keep at least 25 feet away from people and structures. Stay five miles away from airports. Fly your drone safely. Fly responsibly. That was a very informative piece on drones. I really want one though. What for? I mean, so many things. Uh, I can check out my cute neighbor. Creep. I could. Sorry. <laughs> you should see my neighbor, though. She spends a lot of time by the pool. Obviously, you didn't learn anything from the last segment. Speaking of drones, they make a villainous cameo in our IDTV exclusive sci fi short, The June Flower Chronicles. A micro budget feature was written and produced and directed by a CCSF student in hopes of creating an ongoing sci fi web series. Without further ado, check out the first snippet of the June Flower Chronicles, episode one. Best get out of here, kid. You don't want any of their friends showing up. We, where are you from? Somewhere far away. Like from beyond the mountains? Yeah, something like that. I gotta ask you, mister, why is it that the buzzards don't attack you? It's because I'm charming. N no, I mean, 
Is it because of that lightning gun you have? Wait a minute, you've seen guns before? Yeah, um, at the colony. I mean, they're only allowed to guards, but... Colony, huh? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, the colony. Um, we have cows and fields, and there's a lot of us. Well, this gun shoots something else. Yeah, it shoots lightning bolts. But that's not the reason why the buzzards stay away from me. Then why is it? Well, it's because of this thing right here. What is it? It's a scrambler. Keeps me invisible from the buzzers. Looks like a piece of plastic to me. You don't believe me? of those goddamn shipheads. My whole family are made up of ascenders. It's our belief that one day we'll reach for the stars. Right, that's what you call yourselves. What's wrong with our name? Nothing, it's just a damn ship. But it's the only ship in the sky. It's the only thing in the sky other than the sun and the stars. Look kid, there are a hundred ships out there. No, you're kidding. I kid you not, kid. Well then how do you get up in one? Well, kid, you and all your relatives want to get up on that ship. But have you ever thought about the fact that maybe the ship can't hold all you guys? And what if the people on the ship can't even help themselves? Wait, how do you know all of this? Man, you guys are so damn stupid. I'm going to sleep. I can, I can, I can do this. All right. I said a call. IDTV. IDTV. For IDTV. IDTVs. Do you see Volume up. Every year, the students in the broadcasting 148 and 149 classes at CCSF produce three half-hour episodes of IDTV. In broadcasting 149 advanced field video production, students produce, package, and based on the story ideas they have pitched, meaning they plan, shoot, and edit everything from the ground up. By writing scripts, planning all elements in the studio, Advanced Studio students in Broadcasting 148 learn the ins and outs of the control room and produce the overall look and feel or character of the show. They even held auditions to decide on who would be the host of the show. Let's take a look at what goes on behind the scenes. Hello, this is IDTV and I am your host, Freddie Atkins. We have an exciting show lined up for you today. Really exciting. The theme is described as a male with frizzy red hair, a fake nose, and a yellow trench coat. He starts by offering to take a selfie, and then he runs off with your iPhone and escapes in a getaway van. Also, if you feel like working off those extra calories from that cheesecake you had last night, we're going to share some fun fitness tips to include in your workout routine. But right now, let's go to the newsroom and see what's going on around the streets of San Francisco. Stay tuned. John, we go to wreck now to John. <laughs> Kimber Starmack on the show. Welcome, Kimber. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming down. So you're a singer, you're a songwriter, you're obviously a guitarist. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in music. 
Well, music's always been a part of my family, growing up with it, playing piano, singing, all cool. that stuff. Um, but it wasn't really until eighth grade when I got my first guitar that I, I started see. writing and kind of making my own sound and my own stuff. So really early. Yeah, pretty early, wow. yeah. yeah. Well, so it. this song that you're gonna play for us today, Time of Our Life, mm -hmm. do I get that right? Mm -hmm. What's the inspiration behind this one? Usually I write about people um, or experiences sure. or just things that I've gone through. Mm -hmm. um, but this was more like an idea of that kind of excitement about meeting someone for the first time oh. and uh, just kind of the energy between you and not really knowing what's going to come next. So, so I started, many emotions. Right, right. There. right. Yeah, yeah. So I started kind of writing just not really planning on a song. Okay. Didn't really know where it was going to take off, but the words started flowing, melody came, so Out it, it came. all came together. Yeah, it was really, <laughs> really convenient. It was nice. Now, I got to ask you, this last <laughs> name, Starmac, yeah. that's your... Real last that name. is my real last name. That is mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. That is an awesome name. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Without further ado, this is Kimber Starmack with Time of Our Life. <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching the first edition of IDTV 2015. Kimber, any chance we can get you to Encore. just play us one Encore. more tune? Encore! 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 Encore. 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 Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, <laughs> thanks for having me on IDTV. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>